they were on the list to actually join. Uh, they're not going to join us today. Uh, but the biggest thing uh, from the standpoint of where we are, who's on the call, uh, I started something about a month ago now uh, just to proactively have people from different spheres of influence come in, network, grow, learn all together. And so uh, what I wanted to do is just present this hub to where people from all different influences could actually uh, get to know one another, uh, especially during this pandemic. I think it's important to stay connected, uh, especially virtually, even though we can't actually meet uh, face to face and shake hands. So uh, yeah. what I've created is a biweekly uh, networking event to bring people uh, together. Uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago, I actually had Ben speak about leadership and Jonathan, the, uh, the man of the hour, is actually going to talk to us today. Uh, so I just wanted to have that opportunity for people uh, that, you know, want to learn uh, to come together. And so I have created this event. And as I said, this is going to be recorded. Uh, so for those of you that are watching previously, please feel free to get connected to us uh, online. Uh, so Jonathan, the biggest thing that I want to do is go around the room for those of who have joined us now. And then once we get past those introductions, I'm going to give the floor to you. Uh, typically, the conversations last about 30 minutes. I know that we have kind of gone over what we want to talk about. And then at the end of it, I always want to leave it open-ended questions uh, to make sure that people can ask you what they want, what they're feeling. Uh, so in the chat, just to make sure that I can actually see everything, if you do have a chat, or a question in the midst of Jonathan speaking, uh, drop it in the box and then I'll run through those, be the MC for you, Jonathan, toward the end of this. So uh, I know you like to start on time. Uh, so Ben, I'm gonna go with you. If you would just introduce yourself and then I'll just go down the participant list and we'll kick it off to you, Jonathan. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Addison, again for coordinating this. And uh, before I, I kind of introduce myself, I want to thank. Uh, uh, I did get a, a lot of um, help from from some, from a bunch of you after I presented last time, connecting with different people. And just wanted to thank those of you who were a part of that. And uh, I'm still kind of massaging some of those connections and, and working on some of those to see where they go. Uh, but uh, I, I really appreciated that. So thanks to all of you who did that. So if you tuned in last time, you'll know a little bit about me. I'm a, a leadership development is what I do. So I, a solopreneur right now, at least, but I'm, uh, I launched in 2019 this business that does leadership development. I'm a Gallup certified Clifton Strengths coach. So I do one-on-one -on -one work, but I also do stuff with teams and with organizations and, and help with uh, transforming their culture, their team dynamics, and, and then from an individual perspective, I take high achievers and help them achieve even more is kind of the goal with that and what I've been seeing with some of my clients. And so I love doing it. And that is not a picture of my backyard, although I'd love it if it was a picture of my backyard in my background. Uh, I'm in Canada here and it is nice weather today compared to uh, what we have had in, you know, in the last little while, but uh, not like that. Absolutely. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Uh, Diane Williams, I've unmuted you. If you'd go ahead and introduce yourself, we can roll right into that. Okay. Hi, I'm Diane. I love leadership and positive things. So love joining the Zooms and taking some notes. I have uh, turned my picture on for today, so we'll uh, meet in person. So I can't wait. Nice to meet you. Nice awesome. to meet you. Thank you. All right. Gary, Gary Rogers, introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Gary, and um, well, I love uh, connecting with people, love meeting people, and I and one big thing is I love to encourage people and, and make connections. And so, um, part of what I do um, at my company game is really it's just really about a positive place where I'm connecting and for encourage people. And so, I want to do this not because of my own wisdom or my own knowledge, but it's, I want to do this like uh, that is biblically based. And so, you know, what God says, that's what I'm trying to encourage. And uh, it's been great coming here. And Addison, I would say, I, I just took a couple notes for Ben and Addison because I got to know you, Addison. And you know what, what is um, the Bible talks about humility 
and pro like all over it talks about humility and Addison, you are a humble guy and not to say that, you know, that's great. It's great quality to have. And so I just want to share that about you and Ben as well, not only being humble, but also, um, you know, there's all kinds of, um, you know, being righteous and friendly. And I, you know, as I got to know you a little bit and through my connection of Billy, who you guys have talked to, I've learned a little more. And so I just want to, tiny stuff on the outside that people see that is the best but it's the shiny on the inside so that's kind of what i do i check your game as well awesome thanks so much gary I, I really appreciate that uh kristen nelson i'm gonna go ahead and unmute you and then if you would just go ahead and introduce yourself please my name's kristen nelson and i met you through Bill or through Gary, and I was so appreciative. I'm glad to be here and glad to meet all of you and looking forward to the session. Absolutely. Thanks, Kristen. I have to say something really cool about Kristen. So uh, she is uh, actually with Iron Road, and she told me yesterday in her email that she was going to bail out of her own company sales meeting to be on the Zoom call. So super pumped that you decided to just cut the cord <laughs> and just be like, come on, let's do this thing. So uh, very excited, Kristen, to have you here. Uh, as a new guest. So thank you very much for taking time out of your day. All right. Uh, next up, Richard Williams. I'm gonna... Yes, thank you. All right, Richard Williams. Well, as y'all can tell, I'm probably the oldest one in the bunch, but I'm definitely not the smartest one in the bunch. Uh, I'm always eager to uh, meet with, converse with, and learn from all aspects of the business world. Uh, I love leadership. I love positive uh, attributes from people. And I just love to learn and then apply it uh, to what I do on a daily business. Um, I have been retired for, well, since 2003, but uh, I don't uh, ever think of myself as retired. I always try to keep something going every day and stay busy. And uh, my main goal is to help other people. So I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but my dog just jumped up in my lap. Uh, <laughs> here's Buddy. Okay, that's my watchdog. But anyway, I just appreciate the time to interact and I love uh, gaining all the expertise and the information from, from y'all. And uh, if, for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm Addison's dad. Absolutely. And for those of you can't tell the last names, uh, Diane is actually my mom too. So I have to always be on my best behavior uh, because they're so involved on social media and LinkedIn and connections. They join me on these calls. So uh, that's, that's awesome. So thanks Richard for sharing that. AKA dad, coach, life coach, you name it. Uh, next up we have uh, Tony. Tony, go ahead, unmute yourself and please introduce yourself to the group. Yeah, sure. How's it going, guys? I'm uh, joining from sunny California here, uh, Sacramento area. I met Addison through LinkedIn um, because I love what he's uh, doing at Right Now Media. Um, and I'm just here to uh, see what you guys are up to and, you know, provide value. I'm a CEO of my own company and then a, a COO of a, a buddy of mine. Uh, we're partners and so I've got full stack development and uh, Adobe Creative Suite under my belt and looking to provide value. And most importantly, I love Jesus. Uh, he's, he's the driving force uh, behind everything, so. Awesome, sounds good, Tony. Really appreciate uh, the connection on LinkedIn. You know, that's, that's really ultimately whenever I created this group, it wasn't gonna be some big thing, uh, but people keep coming, Gary keeps inviting people. And that's really what it's all about. You know, the, the power and connection is where I really like to resonate with people. Uh, so if we can help each other out just in a small way, whether it's introduction, I mean, that's how business is done. Uh, so very excited for all of you to be on the call today. Uh, in regards to participants, if somebody else comes on, we're just going to continue rolling right through this. Uh, today is actually going to look a little bit differently. Uh, I've asked Jonathan to, number one, share a little bit more about what he does. I think now more than ever, uh, online presence is key. 
and Jonathan and I have known each other for about two years now. Uh, we met in the online space in a Kartra uh, community group, and through that, we <laughs> it's crazy how we met. I won't go too much into details, but we met because he actually started a t-shirt campaign to promote Kartra, but what he was actually doing was promoting a nonprofit that was actually near and dear to his heart. So that was literally the first post that I saw in regards to Jonathan. Uh, it was personal, uh, but that's just all he is, is just insurmountable value uh, to that community that we're in. Uh, so I immediately started talking, connecting. I learned a lot about what he does. And then uh, he also, in that time frame, created the Funnel Builder Society. So I'm gonna let him introduce what he does and then the format for today's call is going to be looking a little bit different uh, instead of a flat out uh, just presentation uh, i've actually taken three questions uh, that i'm going to ask him he's going to respond in an open-ended format and then just allow you to enter into his space a little bit differently and then obviously from those questions it's going to draw out more so a conversation and dialogue from what we're doing here today. So Jonathan, I'm gonna mute myself. If you could just cast a vision for what you do and then point at me when you're ready to go through those questions, I'm going to take it over. Uh, I'm gonna let you have the, the reins for a few moments here. Well, thank you for that. And you know, listening to everybody's introduction uh, actually makes me want to change what we decided we we're going to do. So, ooh, curveball right at you. But that's how life is, right? You got to be able to deal with that. Um, I mean, you guys touched on some things. I was going to go one direction. And after hearing what you guys said, I want to go a different direction, right? So if that's okay, with your permission, I'll do that. Um, I've known Addison, like you said, for a couple of years. Everything you guys said about him is true. This guy is an amazing person, very humble, very dedicated to what he does, which is one of the reasons why all of us are here. So you are the hub. We appreciate you for that. Um, I've been, I started my business about two and a half years ago and my, after struggling, trying to help people, right? And that was the one common theme between everyone here. Everyone wants to help people. And I have a servant's heart and I decided that I wanted to build a business that was built around doing what I do best, but helping people be the best in what they do. So whether it be leadership or whether it be, you know, running your own business or being the CEO of a company or, or just being mom and dad, I, I wanted to be in a position where I could help people authentically express who they are and, and help others, you know, make money doing that. Um, so I've had some struggles, you know, coming to terms with my relationship with money, um, you know, how that looks biblically, right? And I think that's something that's a big thing and how that impacts my life and how that's going to steer where I go. But ultimately, I ended up to a place where I did find a way to serve others, serve my family, stay true to who I am, and create a community of people that are, that are truly there to serve others. Um, so that's the society that Addison's talking about. And I'm, I've just been so blessed to be a part of it, um, to raise my daughter, be here full time every day, um, be home every day, stay home, and, and be able to provide for so many people. That's been an amazing experience that I never thought I would ever be able to do. You know, so um, it's really been a, a great experience. So I'm here to share everything I can and uh, kind of help, you know, any way I can for sure. So thank you, Addison. Absolutely. Thank you. I love curveballs. As you can tell, I'm a baseball guy by the background. So due to COVID, <laughs> I'm actually in my son's nursery. So that's awesome. Uh, I don't have a fancy background like you yet, Jonathan, but I'm working on it. Well, that's I'm stolen. On it. I, it's just a picture. I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can get some good virtual backgrounds on Zoom now. <laughs> hey, me and Ben were just playing on those. That's he upgraded from a beach to a tropical island. So there you go. All right. That's true. Hey, it's yeah. a great conversation starter. So when I'm, my video's not on, I actually have a beach background. So people are like, hey, Addison, you're not on the beach. You're on a phone call. I said, well, I'm, I wish I was on the beach. So let's be there honest. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. So um, I was going to start off by showing you guys, you know, all this income that we've made. But I don't think it's relevant to this point um, because I don't think that's the, the, the whole purpose. Right. The the results of the income that we make is, is truly just a, um, it's a it's a result of a process that we all go through internally in our business and our lives um, in our walk and our journey. And it's, it's always going to be a result. One of the things that I've, that I've come to terms with when you guys were speaking and talking about it 
Um, I did not anticipate on talking about faith, religion, or my walk. I understand that as a context of, of Addison's, but that's always been a topic that I've kind of stayed away from just on my own personal things that I've had going on. Um, but it's never been something that I've, that I've um, refused to acknowledge, you know, and that's something that if anyone ever asks me about it, I'll, I'll gladly share. Um, so the finances, you know, we have been able to literally build a quarter million dollar business in the last year without any websites, without any overhead and marketing spend, without a large team, um, just me and two other people and the other person, my wife, right? Um, and we've been able to, to quit our jobs, become financially free, um, help others give back and, and live the lifestyle that, you know, we read about sometimes or we used to read about. Uh, before this, I worked at Progressive selling car insurance over the phone and so did my wife. And um, we just sat on the phones all day trying to sell insurance for another company, getting paid $12 an hour. And we quit that job and went all in. And it was that leap of faith, I think, that I really want to talk about that, that really was a difference maker. I know there's a lot of people who are building their businesses, and a lot of you are probably here as well. And there's always um, an attachment to what we have and where we want to go and what we have and what we don't have. And that gap for us was so large at one point. And I know a lot of us feel like, you know, I'm working today, I'm in this job, but I know what I want to do, or I have this business and I want to take it from here to here. Um, Addison, speaking more into your heart as well, I, I understand the, the, um, your goals, right? And I understand exactly what you want to achieve. And so it's taking a look at where you are and where you want to be in that leap of faith. And that, and that feeling, that leap of faith is the same type of blind faith that we have to have in our journey, right? So when people ask about how does personal development impact your business, well, there, there comes a point in time where you're not going to know how things are going to work out. You're not going to know where the next bill is going to, how it's going to get paid or, or, you know, where your next client or customer is going to come from. But it's having that blind faith in the process and being able to go through it um, without the stress and out the worry and the fear and just know that you are being, you know, held in someone's hands and you're being taken care of. And it's not your job to figure out what to do but or how to do it but it's just being available to do it when the time is right and when you're called upon to do it that is something that has literally changed our business and that is something that has helped us not only grow personally but grow in our in our business and with our clients and with the people we've attracted and that's why we've attracted people like like addison to us um it, it took a really big leap of faith to quit one day and then go online without website marketing or a plan and and try to build something but we had the same philosophies that we have biblically that we've learned from the beginning. You know, it's, it's teaching people, right? The, the, first, the first thing that we do is we decided to teach people. So Addison, as you go through your daily lives and as all of you go through your daily lives, the question that we wanna ask is, are we being advancing people? Regardless of how people experience us, are they leaving us experiencing, you know, pleasure, joy, happiness, faith, hope? Are we advancing people in their journey and their mission in their life in their day, right? And it's, it's taking a lifestyle choice, you know, of deciding to do that regardless. Um, regardless of what you get from it, regardless of what your intentions are, regardless of how your day is, you know, it's just deciding that I'm gonna be a person who is gonna be an advancing person for others so that I can be a light, so I can be a hope, so I can be a joy in somebody else's life with your smile or thank you or whatever it may be. So that was the first decision that we made now that how does that play into our life and our business well in our business we decided to do the same thing when people come to us whether it be for a strategy session i know ben you probably have people booking calls and talking to them and and some of you have people booking calls to talk to you and we call those discovery sessions or free coaching sessions or whatever you want to call it 90 percent of the people i've experienced are trying to sell me something during that call it's more like an interview we decided that every single person we talk to we would pour into them as if they were our highest paying client and we would do it on our free calls. That one difference in deciding to be advancing, whether not just selling, but just making sure that everybody we talked to left us better, changed our business and allowed us to go from struggling the first 90 days where we only made about $5,000 um, in our business to making over six figures the next six months with the same amount of people that we had reached, you know, connections to. Um, so that was the first thing, you know, in personal development, it's, it's choosing no matter what situation you're in to always be advancing people. This has served in my relationships with my wife, um, with clients and with other folks um, that I've interacted with, especially when you feel wronged, 
especially when you feel wronged. And that's, that's probably the hardest part for us to do is when you feel validated to feel a certain way because something happened that wasn't inside of your parameters of okay, you know, someone doing something or whatever it may be that causes you to feel a certain type of way. I call that being in your feelings. Um, it's so hard to maintain that, that pillar of strength and be advancing even in those situations, right? And I've had people online, you know, say stuff about us and people do things to us online. And I've still, I've actually worked with people who have tried to destroy my brand after they've done that. I've actually turned those relationships into partnerships and worked on projects with these people um, because we will be an advancing person, even at the cost of having to bite our own ego. Um, the, the next thing that really made a difference for us, and I think it's continually to play a, a big role in this, is that we want to always come from authentic space and be transparent. And what that means is, if we're, if we're ever in a situation in your business where you want to help people or help someone else in your life, there has to be a set, of, um, a set of freedom that you can move with that doesn't require you having expectations in that situation. And this is the same thing, you know, biblically. Um, I, I love the church that we go to because, you know, we have that saying, come as you are, but grow from where you are. You know, come as you are, but grow. That's kind of the saying. And um, it's the same thing that we talk about that I've incorporated with our business and in our lives, right? We want to make sure that the people that we are helping, people that we are in contact with, that they don't feel our intentions to our expectations before our intentions. And that's really, really big. And a lot of times when you talk with people, you can feel their intentions and their expectations um, more than their intentions, I'm sorry. Like you can tell that they're, they're wanting you to buy something or they're trying to get you to, they're trying to close you or they want you to sign this document or they want you to, you, you can feel that expectation that they have. Um, but they may say, oh, but I was only trying to help. That's the intention. I was only trying to help, you know? Um, and we see this online a lot, Addison, where people will say, hey, well, uh, I'm gonna send you this link to my affiliate product, you know, and they're trying to get a sale and that's their expectation that you click and buy. Um, but their intentions were, you know, I was just trying to help you. So there's a, there's a real balance there. And we decided that we will never lead with our expectations. We will always lead with our intentions and we're going to stay true to those. So if I came into a situation intending to help you and truly help you, regardless of how it turns out for us, that's what we're going to stick to, which means there's been times that we've done work for people um, that should be price at a higher point at a lower point we've gone you know more above and beyond for people um, and vice versa there's been times where we've you know it's worked out in our favor but it's the willingness to always move forward with the perfect and the most clearest intentions um, and that's uh, that's where I think authenticity is really born is, is when you can truly step back and say I'm not doing this for myself I'm doing this for you and regardless of how this turns out I'm always going to be there I'm always going to be there. And that's a message we leave all of our clients. Um, and that's a message that we leave, you know, with, my, with our spouses and our children. And, you know, that's, that's what we say to them is, you know, I love you. I'm here for you. Um, I'm always going to guide you, be there for you. No matter what decisions you make, um, I'm going to be there for you. And when you fall, I'll pick you up. And when you make a mistake, I won't judge you. And, you know, when you, when you ask for help, I'll, I'll be there and I'll answer. You know, and there's, there's nothing you can do wrong but there are consequences to your actions. There's nothing you can do that'll make me ever stop supporting, loving, being there for you. Same message Jesus gives, same message we give to our clients. And I think that spirit of business is what people are looking for now, especially due to the social distancing and COVID and all that stuff out there. I think people are looking to not only do business with people, but do business with people they like, know, and trust and love and people who actually care about them. Right. So the, the biggest um, the biggest voice we have as a society is how we spend our money, how we vote, you know, those type of things. And I think people are really starting to look at who cares about my situation and what's going on in my life. Who cares enough to understand me and what's going on? And you know what? You only need a handful of those people that you interact with to be able to go from whatever life you have now to a life where you can abundantly serve and give more. Um, and that was also the third thing that I want to kind of talk about was the fabric of our business has always been serving and giving back. Addison and I met because the promise I said was, you know, I have my talk with Jesus. You know, I've prayed, I've cried, I've begged, I've tried to negotiate and barter. I've done everything I can to try to buy this success from the heavens. And it never worked that way. You know, um, it was only when I cleared my heart, I cleared my mind, I let go of expectations, let go of intentions and decided to just live 
and you know be true to myself and true to what I stand for and actually help people because I'm a natural servant. That's who I am. I have a servant's heart. Um, sometimes to the detriment of myself, but I will serve, right? And that's what I'm here for. Um, so there's there's the, the the last you know part that we have to really understand is when we start to think about this is the charity. Uh, it's if you're telling yourself right now that I need to earn X amount of dollars or be this kind of person before I start to serve, then you're, you're misguided in that sense. And that's how I felt. I said, you know what, when I start making 10,000 a month, I'm going to donate 10% to churches and this and that, and I'm going to be able to do that. But I, if you can't donate, you know, $10, you're not going to be able to donate a thousand dollars, right? It's a mindset. It's not about the value of the actual physical paper or coins. It's the process in the heart of giving. And if you can't find it in your heart today, to start giving, serving, and, and doing charity, which I'm sure most of you are, right? But that has to be the fabric of, of your being. Um, not only are you going to heal yourself by healing others, but you're also going to tie an anchor, um, a bigger purpose and mission to your business and your life, right? So I always tell people, if you want to make some changes in your life, if you want to get over some stuff, go talk to people who are going through what you're going through. And not in the sense of you taking from them, but with the intentions of helping them. Because it's amazing the, the, the messages that you'll receive from above when you put yourself in a position to stop thinking about yourself and actually go serve those others. So when I was struggling and having issues with you know, bipolar and things like that, you know, just to be fully transparent and authentic about it, um, the only way I could really get through that was helping other people in that situation. Right. And through constantly serving, I was able to, to grow and really release a lot of the stuff that was going in there, going on inside. And that, that cleared the space to really engage and interact with people on a whole different level. Um, so charity is so important. And that's that's how that's how um, Addison and I found each other, because I'm a heart person and I wanted to start um, taking some profits from some shirts that we had and donate them to the Enya Heart Foundation. It's really important. And um, that's how, you know, Addison and I come together. And that's still a big part of our business. We have multiple shirts up there for sale now. And we're using that, that money to, to help out local organizations. And um, I think that's one of the reasons why, again, because of those three things that we've been so, so blessed at what we've done. So if you ask, you know, what can you do personally to help your business? Um, I think it's the things you do personally that are gonna help your life. Your business growing is a result. Um, profits, more clients, customers, all of that's a result. Um, but that the, the feeling that you get of being in alignment with not only who you are, but with your higher power and living truly authentically on purpose and on passion um, becomes a compass for your life, right? And you never have to guess which direction are you going because you're led by something that's, that's stronger than your own intentions and expectations, right? You're led by a higher calling that you have now branded and sewn into the fabric of your business. So if, if, if you want to start, you know, I always say work, you know, they, you've said it, work as hard as yourself, you know, as you do on your business. I know Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn have all said that. Um, I tell people that the more you grow, the more your business will grow. And the only limits you have in your business and in your life are the limits you put on yourself and your own development, whether it be in your walk, your faith, in your leadership, um, in your compassion for others, or just in your ability to to stand up and, and fight the good fight when others are running away from the, from the noise. Um, so with that, and about three years ago, four years ago, I made, or longer than that, I'm gonna share my screen, Addison, really quick. Um, I came up with this thing, it was in 2013. This was back when I was trying to do a professional development group, but I came up with this thing that says, um, it's called Fuse. Um, and it's sparks. And I want you guys to kind of think about this because as you go through life, there are always going to be sparks. There are going to be sparks that what, what I used to call, you know, get you hot, get you angry, you know, or maybe make you upset. And all of us get there, right? So sparks stands for situations, places, actions that repeatedly keep you stuck. And the reason I say it keeps you stuck is because it, 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 dis it disengages you from the situation and it doesn't allow you to grow. So you're going to be stuck in that same person. Um, so when you, when you come up with these lists of things, I want you to think about them. Like for me, it is when I, when I do something nice for someone and then they don't say thank you. I don't know why. Um, or it's like when you let somebody over in the lane, they don't wave. That could be a spark for you. I don't know why, but sometimes that makes me upset. I think one of the biggest, one of my biggest sparks is unappreciated servants, right? 
or what do you want to call, I guess, ungratefulness, whatever you want to call it there. But also that stems from my own intentions and expectations of people saying thank you. So that's, there's some work there, right? So there's, there's my spark. But I want you to start thinking about what are some of the thoughts and feelings that come to mind when you feel these sparks? You know, maybe it's your, your spouse saying something a certain way, or maybe it's a coworker who always comes to the meeting late, you know, or maybe it's your boss who, you know, asks you for something as soon as you've, you've done it, you know, ask you where it's at. So they're not even checking, whatever it is, but what are some of those thoughts and feelings that come to mind that keep you stuck? And then I want you to think about some of the actions um, and thoughts that are controlling that you're controlling or avoiding. Like, what is it that you're trying to control in that situation? What is it that, that what outcome are you trying to either avoid or, you know, or have come true by having that type of control in the situation? Um, and typically that sounds like, oh, I wish she would just show up on time and not be late. Or I wish, I wish they would just listen to me when I talk, or I wish they would talk to me in a certain way. You know, what is it that you're trying to control or avoid? That's a really big question that you have to start to answer because a lot of times there aren't many things that we can control or avoid when it comes to dealing with other people in this world, right? We can only control how we respond and we can only avoid getting angry, right? And then I want you to talk about creating space. So what can you do to be more prepared next time the spark comes up so you can create some space? Whether that be tell yourself your own mantra, whether it be, you know, stop and look up and, you know, and just ask. I, I know my mom's dead a lot. She'd be like, Lord, give me the strength not to whoop this boy. <laughs> you know, and so I, I would be like, I would like, please give her the strength not to whoop me. <laughs> and so it was like, that's how it was, you know, but what is it though? What, what is it? What can you do to make sure that you're creating that space that gives you an opportunity to breathe and respond in a manner that is congruent with who you are, that's in, in alignment with your soul, your spirit, and who's the most authentic person that you can be, right? We're not all going to be, um, you, know, you know, this Mother Teresa, you know, we understand that. We all make mistakes. We all have sparks, but it's being able to put those fuses out so that they don't turn into raging fires and, and angry or resentment or regret or guilt. It's being able to take care of those now and stamp those out or at least be prepared so that you have the ability to act in a manner that is more congruent with who you are. All right? And that's, 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 if you continue to do that, as you build your life, build your business, build relationships with people, you'll start to see that we're all humans, we all make mistakes, but there always has to be somebody, somebody willing to stand in your corner, even when you're wrong, love you through the ugliness, wipe your tears, hold your hand, lock arms, and help you get there. And it's just deciding if you're gonna be that person for people in your life and in your business. And that's what we've decided to do in this society. And it's something that our members have come to expect from us. So I appreciate you, Mr. Williams, and you, Addison, for being a part of it, because hopefully the things I've said tonight um, or today are congruent with the culture and the brand that we teach and promote in the society. Back to you, Addison. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Jonathan. You know, the biggest thing that I will say uh, from, from Jonathan's perspective, just in uh, what everything he says, everything that he has said is completely true. And I can tell you that from personal experience, just in the amount of uh, knowledge, wisdom, uh, practical, uh, you, you can imagine what our Facebook Messenger looks like. I mean, oh, yeah. It is all over the map just in the conversations that we've had because, you know, the, the biggest thing that I would say, and this resonates with all of us as we're in business, uh, for me right now in sales, Jonathan leading a company, uh, Gary re uh, leading Perfect Game, or excuse me, <laughs> I just lost it, um, Perfect Your Game. Um, and then of course, Kristen being in sales as well, you know, there's always this, this avenue of making yourself available. And Jonathan would be, not to get too personal, but, you know, he always told me whenever I'm growing my business, whenever I'm being entrepreneurial or have these ideas, or even in my current role at Right Now Media, the key is to always make yourself available. And I think that if I could summarize everything that Jonathan said, it would be in that that bubble of always make yourself available and give value. And my Facebook messenger, it definitely resonates mm -hmm. with always giving value and not necessarily me giving it to Jonathan. It's Jonathan giving it to me in, Hey man, how do I set up this Karcher landing page? Or, Hey, I've got a buddy that 
really wants to build a website. He wants to automate things. He wants to build things. How can I help him? Uh, and then, you know, I give that to Jonathan and I don't ask for anything in return, but in those conversations, in those business relationships that I've been able to pass on to Jonathan, it's the law of reciprocity. I was on a sales webinar this morning and he was talking about the law of reciprocity. When you give value to people, naturally they're going to instinctively give to you, not necessarily because you asked them, but because you're available to them and it just helps that. So Jonathan, certainly appreciate uh, everything that you've done for me. And of course, being on this webinar, I think uh, the, the biggest takeaway that I would just ask to kind of kick off some questions. And once again, if you have questions, uh, drop it in the chat just so we're not all unmuting ourselves at once uh, to keep it more seamless. Uh, we've got about 25 minutes till one o'clock. So I think it should be a great Q&A opportunity for us. Uh, so Jonathan, one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, or ask you is, you know, what do you say to somebody who is struggling to grow their businesses and their lives, especially now during COVID-19? We're in an unprecedented time. Uh, obviously, Texas is one of the ones that are phasing out of it more so quickly than others. I've yeah. got people across the map. So could you just speak to that, that, um, that lull, if you will, of how to overcome this specific time for current listeners and people that might be listening in the future? Yeah, I mean, you know, right now, more than ever, people are looking to be connected. You have social distancing that plays on the human psyche, um, which is taking away a lot of interactions, physical interactions that people want. So those interactions don't just go away. They're actually being replaced in forms of social media. You send an increase in YouTube videos, an increase in um, Facebook activity, an increase in Twitter. So what that's saying is that people are looking for outlets to feel um, that, that wants desire to be connected, right? So... During these type of times when anything like this happened, you have two type of people, um, people who are looking, who are buying and hoarding, um, which basically means they're going out and buying all, all these courses and they're taking learning new skills and new hobbies, which is a small percentage of people because actually that's something that most people shouldn't be doing because when life gets back to normal, they won't have time for those things. Um, but then there's a lot of people who are just looking for connections. They're looking for ways to still feel a part of real life, to still have human interactions. That's why your lives are so important. So if you're struggling to build your business right now, I think that the understanding should be that you should be building an audience and a list as of right now. Um, so that when things get back to normal, people are used to seeing your name, seeing your message, seeing your brand and your company in front of them um, more consistently. I, I have this thing in, my, in, our, in our company and we tell everyone that we want to be the Netflix online, basically uh, for everyone's, everyone's Netflix. And what I mean by that is there's some, for me, I've never canceled Netflix, no matter what was going on in my life, no matter what bills were due or whatever, call me crazy, but I just, it's, it just didn't make any sense to not only have, you know, not have any water, but not have any, uh, and not watch Netflix Game of Thrones. Like that's just unacceptable, right? So um, um, it was just, it was, it was one of those cultures that I thought about. It's like, it meant so much to me that no matter what, I decided to keep it. And there's just something about seeing that in, that shows up that, you know, gives me comfort when I want to, you know, whatever, hang out or relax. That's how I go and kick back. Um, so creating that same culture online is important. Right now, you have a chance to do that as more people are reaching out, trying to find connections. So be the connector. Um, be the one who's providing value, like you said. And um, it's, the, it's the psychology of opening the door, right? So think about it. That, that you know what we're doing here if someone walks through a door and your two people are in front and they're walking through double doors the first person opens the door and lets the person behind them go through nine times out of ten that person is going to open that second door and let you go through right that's how it works but if you walk through and open the door for yourself and you just keep walking and then you open the second door for yourself and keep walking you haven't created any type of, of reciprocity, you know, nothing's reciprocated there in that sense. There isn't a, an exchange in value. But when you open that door for someone, immediately they feel the need to open the door for you. You gotta be a door opener during this time. That's what's gonna help you grow your business. And I would say that that is most certainly for B2B and B2C uh, across the board. I mean, if you give value, if you give, 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 uh, naturally it's gonna come back to you. Uh, so. In regards to any other questions, I don't see anything coming through the chat. Uh, so Jonathan, speak to what you had talked about in regards to 
uh, tangible or intangible value. You know, we have a lot of people that are in sales or entrepreneurship that, you know, they might not necessarily uh, be running their own businesses right now, specifically for me uh, at yeah. the current moment or, you know, B2B sales, that type of thing. Could you elaborate on the balance between intangible goods and tangible goods? What I mean by that is trying to secure that meeting. Obviously, there has to be a balance to where if I continuously outreach, outreach, outreach in cold calling or things like that, uh, obviously, you've made your business successful without having to do that, which is awesome. Speak to those that have to be proactive in their outreaches and talk about some practical examples that you've seen in the insurance world versus running your own business now. How do you speak to that sales process with what you said? You know, it's, it's really funny that, um, that cold outreach. So I worked for Keller Williams and um, worked for one of the number one sales agents in the country. And I actually partnered and worked with Joe Williams, who's a co-owner of it. And one of the things he had me do was get on the phone and cold call. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy is a multimillionaire. Why, why am I cold calling? You could just buy the whole Austin newspaper, right? Um, but it was something there that, that I remember him telling me. And it was like, you know what? It's not about the results you make from the call. It's your willingness to do the calls with the right attitude. And that's what he was looking for. And I really didn't understand why I spent so much time, four or five hours a day, going through a brutal process of cold calling. Um, but in the end of it, it made sense when he told me why. And I'll tell you, I didn't sell anything at all through cold calling whatsoever. And I, I booked very few appointments. It was just a, it was a painful process. Um, but there are some things that, you know, I learned throughout that. And I think the biggest thing is, is that consistently be reaching out to people, consistently be connecting. You know, what's, what's, what's important is that people want a go-to. Your businesses that you work with, even on the business to business scale, they want to have a go-to where it's like, I'm going to, um, you know what, Ben's my guy. When I need something, I can contact Ben and his company and they take care of all my needs, all right? And they take care of everything regarding this training, leadership, and, and they want that go-to. That makes them feel secure because you become their guy or their person interested in their business. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing. And I think the only way you can get there is by consistently showing up without expectations. For example, um, there is an insurance guy when I was in real estate and um, one of the ways you market to realtors is by putting stuff in their mailbox and flyers. Um, but this guy was different. He would show up to our team meetings on Tuesday with kolaches and donuts. And if he had the opportunity to speak at the end, he would speak, but he was never on the schedule to speak to us. And what was amazing was that um, after about two or three times, you know, not only did it was funny because we expected him, we we're like, what, no donuts? You know, whenever our team manager didn't bring them, Joe or Gary. Um, but the, one of the times when he showed up, we were like, hey, and we were so happy to get those breakfast uh, donuts that we hurried up the meeting and gave him 15 minutes to speak. Um, and then he started coming back week after week to speak. And he sold a, a product called um, Real, Real Tours. And there was an actual tune in radio where you put your real estate listing on a radio and people drive up and turn into 1300 AM and you could hear the realtor talking about the house. It was called talking homes or talking tours. Um, and he sold quite a few of them. Um, when I think back to that, I think about how much money he spent and how much time he spent showing up, not knowing that anyone would be there, but it was his willingness to, to show up and be there without expectations. And I think that alone was, was, was what bridged the gap for him. He ended up making a lot of money with Keller Williams and those agents there. And the same thing can be true to anybody who's marketing um, currently business to business or business to consumer. I think right now it's about making those connections. Find as many resources that you can that you'll be able to send and reach out to your clients and make sure when you reach out to your potential clients, you're not reaching out to take something, but to give something. Um, make that cup overflow and they'll look at you as the source of that, you know, of that, um, of that flow. And they'll make sure that they connect with you. Um, I say if you're going to give contacts with people, you want to do maybe two to three contacts before you then go for what I call the close. Um, and that close would be setting an appointment. But if you're contacting people, contact them to solve a problem or offer value. Even if you're just making a quick sales call, hey, what's going on? What can I help you with today? You know, or, or what's happening? What can I help you figure out? Or whatever it may be. Um, or put together something on a business to business level where you can consistently put your company as a resource. Um, and that's probably the last thing I'll, I'll tell you about that one. It's, it's, it's something that we talk about called, uh, you know, being Chris business critical, right? How many businesses or consumers are you business critical for? 
which means what are you providing that people cannot and absolutely cannot run their business without or run their lives without? And if you become a source for that, then you'll become their Netflix. You'll be their Netflix. That's nice. May we all be in Netflix. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing how, how people will hang on to things they really care about despite all the tornadoes going on around them, right? They'll grab the scruffy cat. They'll grab that picture, you know, because it's important to them. So you, you want to be top of mind in that sense. Absolutely. Okay. Before we open it up to just like an open forum Q and a last question from Gary uh, could you give one tip on how to use your LinkedIn or best practices on LinkedIn? Videos. Make videos and respond to people directly. That's it. Um, LinkedIn is a great platform for business to business. I think right now the opportunity for you to be posting video content on LinkedIn is amazing. Um, it doesn't have to be sales content. It can be training content or content that's relevant around your offers or services. Um, if you're doing leadership, you can have the five tips of leadership. You could have, um, you know, there's so many things you can do. But I think right now, the biggest thing that to remember is that people on LinkedIn, we're, we're real business owners, right? We're real CEOs and things like that. So start those conversations in a manner that's geared towards them. And let's let it make business sense. Um, I, I think that when people reach out to me on LinkedIn or try to find me on LinkedIn or other platforms, they're always reaching out to me with like, this is what I can do for you. And this is how, how awesome this is and how great this is. And um, I would just love people to reach out and say, Hey, this is, you know, is there anything I can help you with? You know, I don't want to charge you. I just want to, I want to build a relationship with you, get to know you or, you know, be a resource for you. And here's some resources that could help you. That's, that's someone I want to be in business with. Um, the other catch 22 is also that, when you reach out to people on LinkedIn through whatever manner, um, understanding that people still see it as a cold outreach. So by having a way to bridge that gap and giving people an opportunity to connect with you um, by having value is gonna be very important. And then LinkedIn messaging, make sure that you are personally responding to people. I have a few tools that I use to automate this stuff to do direct messaging and friend um, adding people and following on LinkedIn, um, but it still is very authentic, you know, so. Awesome. You're welcome, Gary. Awesome. Does anybody have, if you have any other questions, uh, like I said, just go ahead and open, open Q&A. Uh, if you do have one question, just unmute yourself, and then we can just kind of roll into an open discussion. Yeah, I have a quick question. I wanted to know, um, what do you actually recommend or what do you do in regards to uh, your scheduling far as, uh, like promoting, like, do you have like certain days where you actually message people or certain days that you reach out about what you can offer, what you can do? Um, wh how do you go about that far as the time management and the, mm -hmm. the balancing act of, of, of that? Or like, do you, what do you do far as that? You know, when we first got started, it was just always, I had, my phone was attached to me, right? I mean, my, my business came in through messages, so I was always responding personally and directly. Um, the, the, at first it was all day, um, but you know, as we started to gain more clients, then it was a set set of time. I think right now the biggest thing to remember is if you don't have time to respond and don't make the post, that's the biggest thing. Because one of the things that I think that is important is that when I make a post of value, um, let me show you something really quick. Now, this, we're in a different market, so keep that in mind, right? We're, we all do different things. I teach how to make money online, and you guys have a lot more different businesses than I do. Um, but one thing that I want to show you really quick is when people come in and start to respond online and start to engage, there's my son, my daughter, my wife, kids, like this post right here. Um, we put this post up, and we asked people who wants a podcast landing page in Kartra, and there were 139 comments. Actually, there's about 60 comments on here but as you can see every last one of these i replied and i was putting messages on and i have a tool that replies for me and validates my messages because that's where i'm at now i'm able to do this automatically before i started running this tool i was actually running and replying to people just manually every as soon as they would reply i would reply i'll message you i was getting something in just message you and i was just replying to everyone because that's what people expect 
right? That's what they expect. And each, each one of these replies gave me an opportunity to then send a message to someone and then close in you know, a book an appointment. And that's what we did. I booked 99% of my appointments from comments in messenger. Um, so that's kind of how it worked. And then I turned on that the automation tool. Cause I just, you can't reply to all of them all the time, but that, there were multiple ones that we did that were like that. Um, so right now, if you don't have the time to do it, don't make the post or find a tool or software that you can use to automate the entire thing. And if you do that, then um, you'll be able to see this one was a small one. This one, we had 241 comments. And again, on this one, we were, again, replying back to every single person directly, you know, and it was just m short messages. Uh, but there's also a science behind that because every time you reply on a post, Facebook kicks it back up to the top of someone's news feed, which means you get more comments. So things like that help to kind of push our brand and allow us to, you know, start generating income over and over and over again. So um, I post, I post daily and I respond for about an hour and then I'm out I'm done. So um, this is the community that we've set up. Uh, Addison, you haven't seen this yet, have you? You haven't seen this page, have you? Uh, I don't think I've seen that one yet, no. All right, yeah, so I know someone said they're in web dev, is that right? I know uh, Tony said he was. Um, this is our, our community and this is our free value. So people are asking, how, how am I bridging the gap right now and how am I able to create relationships with people? I've created an entire training course that most people would charge customers in my field, they would charge them for. I created this training course that I give to people for absolutely free because it brings them into my network. This is like me not only opening the door, this is like me building the building around them so they never have to open a door themselves. Um, and that's, the, that's that, that transition so that at the end of this process, people feel that they've got received so much that I didn't become their Netflix, you know, and I didn't become the person who's gonna help them take the next step. So um, this is just one of those manners, but again, this, is a, this, this takes time, it takes an investment. You could have something for leadership training. The question is, is what are you gonna do to, to show people that you're absolutely, you're absolutely different than everybody else? Because to be honest, everything we do, somebody else does. The question is, why are they gonna do it with us? Why choose us? Why go to HEB over Walmart? And it can't just be because one's closer, right? There has to be some, some reason there and you have to really build upon that reason. Um, yeah, that's what I think. Well, Jonathan, Thank you. to your point, Jonathan, I go to Target over Walmart just because- Target, Target. Yeah. I was just there last night buying a griddle. So <laughs> I know I, like, I went in at 8.45 and they closed at nine. They're like, not this guy. <laughs> <laughs> With the baby walking slow. So yeah, it's a big thing. Exactly. I think somebody started to say something, but I started talking about Target. Was there somebody that had a question? That was me. I was just saying thank you. That was very helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Real people make real connections and make real results. You know, that's been the, the biggest thing. That's what, that's what Addison does very well is make connections. So good stuff. Good stuff, Thanks, man. man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Any, any other questions uh, for Jonathan comments, anything you've got? I don't see anything else on the chat. So if you yeah, have, I think we're good. yeah, I think so. Uh, everybody, once again, uh, this one, this one was actually recorded. Uh, so I'm going to uh, download this and have it available. I know there were a lot of people that weren't able to be on the call. Uh, the biggest thing for me guys is, Everybody that's on the on the call, get connected with each other. I'm going to follow up with the Zoom recording as well as the contact list for the people that were actually on the call today. I think it's important that we get we get uh, posted up. And then, yeah, so Gary said, Jonathan, what do you need help with? Let's go ahead and close out with that, and then uh, we'll go from there. I, I need help with – I need authentic people in my, in my circle. You know, the next phase of our business is creating opportunities for others to grow. I need people who can teach leadership, who have an authentic heart, so that we make sure that our members are growing, are growing with authentic leadership. I need people that, that have, that are willing to invest in people, you know, and not just because, um, you know, we want to grow a bigger business, but because you feel like you're in the right place to do the right thing. So the next phase of my journey is seeking out authentic hearts. 
of every type of industry, you know, leadership and coaches and, and marketing and, and life coaches and all of these things because we, all of our members are people who go through their own things. And I want to have a resource and a network of experts who can serve those people that have a true authentic heart without intentions. And I want to be able to take care of them so they can move forward and not have to worry about the financial issues that are, that are from serving. Right. So that's what I'm working on now is creating a system where my members or people in our community or anyone can step in and be the best version of themselves and help our members be the best version of themselves. So I need help activating an army of authentic, authentic servants who want to, you know, take people to the next level. So it's hard. Loyalty is hard to find online without connection. And that's why I value and appreciate your loyalty. And my loyalty to you, Addison, has just been matched because of that reason. It's just you do not find people that have the standard of commitment and dedication like I've seen from you. Um, and then when you do, you, you make sure you pour all into those people because those are the ones who, who, you know, who are going to be there for you. So I don't have any um, beginners or day one people that were there before. You know, everyone has just come along. So, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really hard to look around and be like, you remember those days? And it's like, no, there was no one here. You know, it's just, just, you know, it's just us. So I value you and what you bring to the table. So appreciate that. Uh, yeah, everybody, I, to wrap it up, you know, I certainly appreciate Jonathan. Thanks for, uh, thanks for pouring out. You know, I think, I think the biggest thing that we can all do, uh, you know, especially on LinkedIn, you know, you're, you're getting to know the actual real person. Mm -hmm. And so I think more so for B2B, that's where, the real relationship sprout and then B2C, I would say where Jonathan is right now teaching those entrepreneurs with FBS, it's more so on Facebook and in those private groups, uh, which is where we met originally. So the biggest thing, take away, get connected with people that you can trust. Uh, and then of course, you know, if you do know anybody that just kind of a plug for Jonathan, if you know any entrepreneurs that are looking for websites, a society, uh, Jonathan's the guy to go to. Uh, everything that you've seen on this, uh, he does weekly Zoom calls just like this, breakout sessions to connect with people that are actually building their brands, building their websites in that entrepreneurial phase. And then also, if you know real estate agents, uh, Gary, I know you've been in that plug as well before. So if you know anybody that's in a sole proprietorship or even has a team, uh, I saw some excellent work by Jonathan with a recent doctor. Uh, through Kartra and his, his website build. So literally anybody that you can think of that's in the business space, if you want to connect with somebody that knows what they're doing in the online world, uh, please connect with Jonathan. He's your go-to guy there. Uh, and then of course, with all of the other different industries that we have today on the call and those that are going to listen in the future, uh, the tight-knit community is what I want to foster in the business world. So thank you for being on the call, Jonathan. Really appreciate that. Uh, and then just to kind of close out today, uh, if you do know anybody um, that would want to be a part of this networking group, uh, as you and I both know, it's growing organically. And that's the, the value that I want to do there. So please spread the word. And then also, if you uh, being on the call, if you want to speak or if you've got something to bring to the table, uh, I'd love to have you take the spotlight just like Jonathan did today. So with nothing else, uh, I will close out the call today. And then Jonathan, once again, thank you, man. You're awesome. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate you for having me on. It's always been a pleasure. I'm going to head over to another client meeting, man, but I appreciate you. And I love to talk with you more about everything. Invite me to the next one. I want to be a, a fly on the wall. Absolutely. You can be a fly on the wall, gentlemen. All right. I appreciate you, man. You have a good one, brother. All right. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm going to close out today. Y'all have a great rest of your afternoon. You too.